We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in dividing verses to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you don't divide the verses, then you're going to combine them all together and come up with a bunch of major wrong doctrine. Now, one of the easiest verses to prove dispensationalism for a pre-tribulation rapture will be 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now you might say, why is that the case, Pastor? Because when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it shows that the pre-tribulation rapture was never taught before. It was a mystery until the Apostle Paul. So this is a powerful proof text because why? The reason why is because when you look at Matthew 24 as well, so we're going to look at two places. Your first hand is at 1 Corinthians 15. Then your second hand will go to Matthew 24. We're going to compare and contrast these two verses occasionally. Okay? Matthew 24, you must understand, is the John 3.16 for post-tribulation rapture people. They use that to prove a rapture after the tribulation and that Christians will go through the tribulation and thus they will be raptured after the tribulation. So Matthew 24 is their key. Our verse to prove a pre-tribulation rapture is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That is, our, that is our main proof text to prove a pre-tribulation rapture. Now, the thing is this, is that what do we believe in? Well, we don't deny Matthew 24. There is a rapture after the tribulation. We don't deny that. However, that is for tribulation saints, not for church saints. Are you part of the church, the body of Christ? Yes. So you got your own rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, and that's before the tribulation. But Matthew 24 talks about a rapture sometime uh, after the tribulation. Well, that is for tribulation saints. We don't deny this rapture, but it's for tribulation saints. And then this rapture is for church saints, which is before the tribulation. So see, they don't rightly divide raptures. They don't rightly divide the Word of God. But uh, let's look at with Scripture in Scripture and see what the Bible says. So in 1 Corinthians 15 first, which your hand is at, notice what Paul says at the first part. He says, behold, I show you a mystery. Mystery. Mystery meaning it was kept secret and it was not revealed before. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and you're going to look at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. What's the mystery? The rapture. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Excuse me. Notice the dead resurrected, changed body, raptured up to heaven. And that's considered a mystery. Well, if Paul claimed that this is a mystery, not revealed before, so here's a church age, and then here we are at Bible times, all right, the Old Testament. Jesus Christ, you know, he did not die on the cross yet, so he was still at the Old Testament. Jesus said at Matthew 24, there is a rapture, which is after the tribulation. So he did talk about the rapture before Paul. Paul was later after Jesus at 1 Corinthians 15. But Paul claimed that it's a mystery for the church that hasn't been revealed before. Yet Jesus says that it wasn't a mystery, that it has been already revealed. Thus, here's a very powerful proof text for a rapture only for Christians, pre-trib, and a, this Matthew 24 definitely has to be for Jews. Because Paul, he was writing to who? Corinthians. They're not Jews. They're Gentiles. But Jesus, in Matthew 24... Oh, no, it's for Gentiles. It's for everybody. No, it's for Jews. Why else did Paul say it's a mystery to Gentiles, non-Jews? So here's the church, which is non-Jews. Why would he tell? That's why he said, behold, I show who? Jews or you? You, a mystery. So he's speaking to the church. Non-Jews, this is something that they never heard of before. That's for them. 
This one, but Jesus already did talk about a rapture before. So how is this reconciled? Easy. Dispensationalism. Right group of people, right time period. Jesus did reveal it, but it's only for Jews. And guess what? It is not a secret. Look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. So your hand's already over there. Now look at this. This is amazing. Stephen Anderson and Alex Jones and all those guys, they deny the pre-tribulation rapture to be a mystery or a secret because it's public. <laughs> and you know what? That just supports dispensational rapture. That just proves our side even more. Because Matthew 24 show, has to show a different rapture from 1 Corinthians 15 rapture. Why? Because this is a secret, a mystery. This one is public. In fact, Matthew 24 says, if they tell you that this rapture is a secret, deny it. That's what Jesus said. Look at Matthew chapter 24. And notice what the scriptures reveal. Verse 26. Uh, no, verse 25, this is better, verse 25. Behold, I what, show you a mystery? No, I have told you before. <laughs> this is not a mystery. This one was already revealed. You know why? Because the Old Testament already told you so much about that last day, resurrection, and rapture. Old Testament is filled with that. So Jesus said, behold, I told you before, not a mystery, like Paul says. The verse 26, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he, Jesus Christ, is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. That context is when Jesus is coming, it's not in secret, it's public. Verse 27, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, well, that's very public, so shall also the what? Coming of the Son of Man be. That's very public right there. But that contradicts, that's very different from look back at 1 Corinthians 15. Paul said, what, behold, it was already spoken to you before? No, I show you a mystery. Look at that. It's something mysterious. It's secret. Hasn't been revealed before. Look at verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. See, really quick, at a blip of a moment. It's not going to be a public event where it takes its time, where Jesus bursts forth, where the clouds and heavens are all removed, right? Public. Revelation 6, Isaiah 34, if I recall. All the host of heaven and earth is removed. Jesus Christ coming lightning from heaven, Matthew 24. And I am not in the secret chamber, Jesus says. It is in public, and guess what? All sees it. It's a public event that all the world will see. But right here, in verse 51, it's you, the church, that's mysterious. And verse 52, blip like that. It's not where it takes its time to show everything in public. Not only that, it says, verse 51, Behold, I show who a mystery. Is it the world or is it Christians? Christians, you. In fact, if they say, oh no, it's for the world too, well, look at 1 Corinthians chapter... 1 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 4, that's not true. The rapture is a mystery to the church, and that mystery is revealed ex exclusively only to the church. But this one right here has to be public for all the world to see. Exclusively for the world. This one is exclusively to church. The rapture is a mystery. The mysteries of God are given to who? Look at 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards. That means people taking care of the what? Mysteries of God. Now, Stephen Anderson, he likes to harp and whine that, oh, this mystery does not mean that something that's kept secret and wasn't revealed before. That's what he claims. But are we going to go by his definition of the word or the scripture? Look at Romans 16. Romans chapter 16. Romans 16. Y'all can go by Stephen Anderson. He can be your final authority. I'm going to go by the King James Bible. Romans chapter 16. Let, let the Bible define mystery for me and not Stephen Anderson. And remember, who's the author? Not only that, the context of the author who said the word mystery. He wrote Romans, he wrote Corinthians. So how would he, well, how would Paul think is a mystery? Something revealed 
to him that he gave to the church that wasn't revealed before. If you deny it, look at Romans 16, verse 25. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to who? My gospel. Something that was given Paul exclusively to the church that wasn't revealed before. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. What is this mystery defined as? Which was kept what? Secret since the world began. Let the Bible defines to you what it means. So guess what? This rapture of 1 Corinthians 15 was never revealed before. So how can Matthew 24 prove a, po a post-tribulation rapture for Christians if it hadn't been revealed before? Oh, but there's no doubt it's a rapture right here. Yeah, they just proved that it's dispensationally to Jews, not Christians. They just proved dispensational rapture. Because Matthew 24 says that the rapture is different from the Christian rapture. Things that are different are not the same. If I say there's a yellow car parked in parking lot A and a green car parked in parking lot B, does that mean it's one and the same car? No, because you can tell by the differences of what the car is and where it is that it, there must be two different cars. Same thing, when the Bible says this, there's a rapture after the tribulation that is public and for Jews, and there's a rapture that's for the church that hasn't been revealed before, and it's a mystery, and it's not, the mystery is not given to the world but to Christians, then that, guess what it means? Use some common sense. Things that are different are not the same. Two different raptures then. One for Christians and one for Jews. Let the scripture show you the amazing light of dispensationalism and prove to you with scripture with scripture of what it means and not like how you want the word to be defined as. The Bible always reveals us the truth. So the thing is, is that this is probably the easiest verse to prove a pre-tribulation rapture is simply using 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. That's the simplest verse to use. And then if they're a little bit more learned because they were trained by Stephen Anderson, Kent Hovind, or Alex Jones, and all those guys, then, and Ken Hovind starts to give you a call and says, I want to hold a debate with you. I want to debate with you, you know, about the rapture. You know, he, he did that with some Bible-believing preachers before. So when he does that, then, you know, these guys, you just show, then you have to go a little deeper by showing differences with Matthew 24 and 1 Corinthians 15 and proving that they have to be different. And not only that, this one has to be first time. So thus, they prove pre-trib rapture for Christians and a different rapture post-trib for tribulation saints.